so that was quite a flashy intro. Uh, a lot of people have been asking what I've been up to for like the past year or so and what life is like, been like. So that's just like a little bit of a reel of the different type of stuff I've been doing. It's not always just been like 3D work. Um, it's been all sorts of stuff, including like photography and traveling and stuff like that. So a lot has happened, but that's just like a bite-sized version of it. But today I wanted to do a photogrammetry tutorial. So we'll get to that section now. Um, a lot of people have been asking me how I went about doing the Nike project and it was quite complex and quite complicated and really advanced which is why I hesitated making the tutorial because a lot of people still ask me like where certain buttons are in Cinema 4D and things like that and I was afraid of making something super complex um, and then people just asked me thousands of questions and I didn't really want that. So I'm still going to make the tutorial. I'm going to show you the basic processes. However, I'm going to link some references and some guides below on how to do this yourself and how to uh all the technical questions you might have you'll have to reference and google and all that stuff yourself because i don't have the time and i'm not i'm not a manual i'm not a guidebook so uh, unfortunately i can't ask the thousands of questions you'll probably have um, if you're trying photogrammetry and stuff, you will get a lot of errors, you'll make a lot of mistakes and trying to get something perfect will be very difficult. Um, I struggled enough to do that and it took me like two weeks of researching to eventually um, figure it out. And unfortunately, I can't help everyone if they're having issues. So again, everything will be linked in the description, all the resources and stuff. Um, and then we'll get into actually the process of making this. So things you'll need is a camera, a tripod, uh, either digital digital cameras preferred or you could just use a cell phone and then you'll need a shoe and maybe a light tent and maybe um, a rotating box so it depends on the methods you're using this I'll link some um, resources below and you can choose whatever way you want to do it but this is the way that I made the Nike commercial and the way I scan everything so first we'll just go into the process of um, actually scanning it and what the scene setup is like and then we'll go into importing them into Lightroom, editing them and then we'll go into importing them into our scanning software and then how we process everything and um, yeah I hope you guys enjoy hopefully this tutorial won't be five hours long because it's quite complicated uh, again I'm not going to exp explain all the details and like where to press all the buttons because uh, that's just going to take too long and if you have any questions and stuff just google it read some blogs and manuals it's quite a complex topic and yeah let's get on to the tutorial so this is what our typical setup looks like we've got our camera we've got our lens and we've got our light here so if i go and turn this light on that's what it looks like and it just adds a little bit of light especially if you get a lot closer with the camera for example um, it can really add some more light here and then as well, you get like a control setting of how much light you want to add in. Um, so we've got our camera, our lens, our light, put it on a tripod. And we've got a nice light tent here. As you can see, we've got some harsh uh, lighting that's actually coming from this direction. But because of this light tent is blocking a lot of that and providing a soft, even lighting. It's kind of hard to see on this camera. Um, but it's providing like soft, even lighting around our object here. And then pretty much what I do is I just take a photo rotate it a bit, take another photo, rotate it a bit, take another photo, rotate it a bit. Um, and then after you've done a 360 turn, you just raise the tripod a bit, take one from maybe there, one from around there. Then you lower the tripod a bit, you can take one from down here and then down here as well. And then you pretty much just take 360 degree images of your shoe from 360 degrees and also at varying angles from there, 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 there. And then once you've gone and taken all your photos, then you can go and pop that into Lightroom. All right, so now we're inside of Lightroom. We've gone and imported our images and you can kind of see um, what these images look like when I finally took them. So this is kind of the level of detail and quality that you would want when it comes to scanning your images. Obviously, it doesn't have to be this high resolution um, you might not be living up to the standards that I was when I was making this like I was capable of exporting like 16k maps and extremely high detailed 3d geometry you might not need that you might just need something very very basic depending on what you're using this for so here if we zoom in you can kind of see the level of detail that we're getting now because of the lens I was using it's not super super sharp so we might have to inside of post 
um, sharpen it up just to add in those details. Um, if you have a really expensive lens, you will probably get sharper images than I did. Um, but in this case, this is just kind of what I got. So in this case, I shot it on a black background um, instead of a white one. Black background was easier because the photogrammetry software found it harder to pick up the, back, the black background and that way it wasn't going to put in all those details when scanning it. So uh, the downside to the method I'm using here is you have this cloth here and you're going to have to cut that out and then you're going to have to cut out this bottom shoe and then flip flip the shoe around and then scan the other side of the shoe and then combine them together. So uh, I thought I imported them into these folders here, but I may not have. So if I just go to all photographs, that was my bad. I thought I put them in different batches, but it looks like I didn't. Um, so here you can kind of see the the bottom side of the shoe and the different angles I shot it at. And then in the end, all I did was I just cut out um, this the sole, cut out cut out the sole on the bottom, cut out the sole on on this side, and then when it was flipped over, I also cut out the top side. And in the end, I just combined them together as close as possible um, when I got the scans. And so um, another thing, you might want to have a very brand new shoe that's clean. <laughs> this is a very dirty shoe, and I had to in post. Um, make it look less dirty, um, like remove all the brown and the dirt and stuff like that. So things like that you want to watch out for. Um, and you also want to make sure that your shoe doesn't move and doesn't change around because that's going to really confuse the scanning software. So good thing is tucking in the laces. Um, having hanging laces and stuff is just going to cause issues. And then also having like a piece of tissue inside here um, will keep the shoe upright and the shoe's just not going to move as much. So. The cloth, the purpose of the cloth is to help the scanning software recognize the points in the shoe. On the shoe, if you have like a lot of points where there's no detail, or a lot of repetitive patterns, the scanning software gets confused and won't align the images correctly. So the cloth is purely just there for um, helping the, the scanning software figure out where the images are in 3D space and align them correctly. Uh, originally, I had dots on the actual thing, um, on the actual rotating turntable thing and that ended up not scanning as great so I had to throw a cloth in there. It's a bit of a hassle to end up going and cutting that out but um, for the scanning process it makes life a lot easier. So once I've imported these images in um, you can see how bright it is because of the ring light that I had on the shoe and I'm not relying on environmental lighting here. So all the environment is pretty much dark except this here. That's um, the light that's shining on there. So once I've done all that and I've imported them, I want to go and crop each image like this and just crop out all the unnecessary parts. So I don't need that. And then when it comes to editing your image, I want very low highlights. I want to bring out as much detail as I can for the scanning software. Once it's scanned, once it's processed, then in Photoshop, I can go and um, color grade it and make the shoe texture look the way I want it to and stuff like that afterwards. Right now, we just need as much detail for the scanning software. So dropping the highlights so it's not super blown out brings in the details on the bright areas. Lifting the shadows brings in the details on the dark areas. Now here the background is starting to come out and the scanning software is going to notice that. The scanning is going to get messed up. So I need to just drop the blacks here a little bit so that the background kind of disappears as much as possible. You also want to make sure your exposure is correct. So maybe bringing up your exposure a little bit. And here there's too much contrast. So maybe dropping the contrast, something like that. But just making sure that this background isn't showing here. Here it's showing a little bit too much. So I might even just drop that a little bit and then drop, pick that up, drop that, something like that. So now we've got detail. Um, then here the the type of settings I was using, I was using a, here you can see ISO 100. Uh, don't need any high ISO because I'm using a ring light. Um, so I get all the lighting I need from the ring light. If the lighting is too low, just increase the ring light's brightness, which is great. Then 30 millimeter lens, F22. F22, make sure that there's not, um, there's not a lot of depth of field. You don't want a lot of depth of field in your images because if you do, um, Scanning software is going to get confused because of the blurring, the blurriness, the whole size of the shoe, the whole range of the shoe from the back to the front needs to be in focus. And then 0 0.7 seconds shutter speed, just so I can get as much light as possible in. 
um, without having to increase the ISO or anything like that. So here's another example. Just crop this in, maybe crop that because I don't need that. And then you just want to drop your highlights. So this looks, this doesn't look as good as it looks here, but it's not meant to look good. It's meant to give the, the scanning software as much detail as possible. Increasing the shadows a little bit, dropping the blacks a little bit. And then other things, your effects here. So you know, your lens corrections, just making sure that there's no lens effects that's wrong here. So um, just applying some chromatic aberration lens effects lens effects and any like profile corrections you have like um, distortion or anything like that and then if your photo is like really not sharp you can increase like the sharpness here just to help your scanning software start to pick up a bit of those details in your shoe um, and yeah so once you've done that you want to export all your images as TIFF files preferably TIFF files are massive um, but it'll make sure that you get uncompressed files for scanning and also you want to export at the highest resolution as you can but that will, if you're exporting like super high resolution files like I did, your scanning and all that will take forever. Luckily, I've got a 2080 Ti and a 1080 Ti, which did all the processing. So for me, it took like five to eight hours to do all the processing in total. I just went for like a run, went for lunch, came back um, and it was done. Um, but if you don't have a great PC, some people it takes days, even up to like a week. So just watch out for that. So now we've gone and exported all the images and now we go and import it in here. Here you can see all the images that we've got and pretty much we've got like different chunks here. So this is uh, different variations and trials that I've used. So here's like the bottom side scan, then there's the top side scan and um, here you can see a little bit of the cloth showing down there. And then here's like the chunk, here's the top, the top side with the um, cloth deleted and the cloth cleaned out. Here's the bottom side with the top part deleted and the top cleaned out. And then here's the two merged together. So if you wanna know how to do all this, there's a lot of tutorials. I can't crunch it all into one, that'll take hours. Um, Google, like scanning tutorials in Agisoft or Metashape or um, whatever software, Meshroom. Um, and it's a learning process. This took me like two weeks to learn, so I can't crunch it all down into one. Um, and then there's like some great tutorials. This one chick tried to like photo scan a rock and like she showed how you can like in introduce like tracking points and in create these tracking points so that you can scan them all together and align them together. And then it's a process. I trialed and errored this a lot. Um, sometimes the scan would look horrible. It'll just look like a burst of points scattered everywhere. And I had to just re try and figure out like problem solving. That's the whole, that's my job. My job is like to problem solve. Um, when it comes to 3D scenes and stuff like that. So the rest was just problem solving, um, figuring out what was going wrong and then fixing those issues. So eventually I ended up with something like this. Very, very beautiful. All the images are aligned 100% correctly. Here you can see all the sections where I took the shoes from. So I took a row from all these sections here and it ended up with 485 different images. High resolution images, 485 of them and you can see why that introduced, why that created a beautiful scan in the end. So now here's the re apologized version here as well. So you guess you'll only really see that if I go in here. So here is a much smoother version of it here. You can see it's not like super dense. Um, if, you ver if we check this one here, here you can see what it looks like just straight out the scan. There's a lot of um, imperfections and stuff like that that you might deal with, which might not look make it look as great. Here you can see there's a lot of imperfections in here and here. So I just went and retopologized it inside of um, ZBrush. <laughs> that will take another tutorial for you to learn. Um, but here you can see there's a beautiful final mesh of the shoe. So, um, so yeah, so basically the whole process is you import all your images. Um, you go and you line all your images, which will basically just calculate all the images and figure out where all the cameras are. And then you'll get something that looks like this. Once all your images are aligned correctly, um, then you want to go and optimize your cameras and calibrate your cameras. So here you optimize your cameras positions and your calibration of the cameras so that everything's lined up hundred percent perfect. Then you go and you build a dense cloud. A dense cloud is basically well, firstly, you need to build a point cloud, but I don't know why this is not showing here. Uh, let me just see if I'm missing something. First, you build a point cloud, but it might be 
part of the dense cloud here. So you build a dense cloud, which I think the point cloud is also included. Um, then you'll get like a rough idea of like where your points are placed and you can see roughly where everything looks, uh, where everything is and if it looks right. So here we can see roughly everything looks right. Uh, here you can see there's a few stray points on like the edges and stuff and it doesn't look 100% perfect, but when we start to um, build our dense cloud, we can filter all that stuff out. So once we've done that, um, we also might want to go and filter out stuff. So here, if we go into, I forgot where this is. I did this thing like four months ago. So excuse me if I'm forgetting stuff. Um, I know it was somewhere here. Okay, I'm forgetting. But there's a setting basically, oh, oh yeah, here we go. Gradual selection. So here you can kind of select points based on their error rate here. So here you can select all the points that are like have a certain amount of error and reconstruction error. So I just read some manuals and I figured out what the optimized um, reconstruction error was right here. So I any things that had a certain amount of error in terms of like the reconstruction, I went and deleted those using this thing. And then I just had all the um, points where the software was pretty sure that it got it right. And that ended up with this thing. Then you go and you build your dense cloud. That will take a while. Um, and if you build your dense cloud using ultra high settings and also like mild to aggressive settings um, for the depth filtering, it'll filter out a lot of the points that are wrong, a lot of the points that are straying. Uh, and then you'll end up with if something like this, which is a dense cloud. So here we can pretty much see our shoe looks for the most part correct. There's the little points around here, like here you can kind of see there's little stray points on the edges, like here that might be a bit offish, but that's okay. Um, when we start to build our depth maps and stuff like that, a lot of this will be filtered out even more. So, yeah, so there's our dense cloud. And then after you've built your dense cloud, you build your mesh. So your mesh will come in like so. It'll probably, oh, excuse me, I just pressed the wrong button so it has to load that in. <laughs> uh, just one second. So your mesh will probably come in looking like this. Here's the normal map version or the solid version. And this is most likely what your, your mesh will look like. So here, this is a very, very good scan of it. Um, it's not 100% perfect, which is why we need to retopologize it and clear up a lot of stuff. But this is a very, very good scan here. So here you can see like some mild errors going along here and stuff like that, but it's fine. Then once that's done, uh, you build your texture for your actual mesh. And then that's when your texture preview comes in and then you'll see what your final scan shoe looks like. So there's a lot of processes that I'm skipping over, things you might need to watch out for. And again, uh, this took me like two weeks to learn. Like I feel like I could build like a university paper on all the stuff I learned and it's just too much to fit in this tutorial. So um, check out the links in the in below, do your research, read the manuals of these programs and photogrammetry and stuff and you'll be able to figure it out yourself. So now we can see a textured version of the shoe. It looks 100% almost perfect. It looks great. The only thing that's wrong with the shoe is it's just dirty and the actual shoe itself which I fed in the software is old and dirty and ragged and stuff that we used for, uh, my friend used to use for running so um, that's no fault of the software itself so that stuff we cleaned up in the end um, through Photoshop textures and stuff like that um, and yeah it looks pretty great then after that re apologize the whole shoe um, inside of ZBrush and now you can see a much an even better version of the shoe, even better model of the shoe here. A lot of these front sections and stuff are fixed. Um, the shoe looks even better now, um, even uh, better put together. And then we just reprojected the texture onto this retopologized shoe. So <laughs> quite complex. <laughs> this is why I was scared of doing this tutorial because I know it's pretty advanced and a lot of people are gonna have no idea what's going on right now. But if you watch enough tutorials, you'll figure it out. So. Um, for whatever reason, I ended up using this version of the shoe with these little scuff marks. Maybe I just didn't have time. Uh, maybe I was just over it because I've been trying to figure this out for two weeks. Um, but this version of the shoe actually does look a lot better. And there must be, there must have been a good reason why I didn't end up using this one. 
because uh, even if you see like the wireframe and stuff, um, the wireframes are a lot more spaced out and evened out, um, even though it's quite dense and it can be reduced a little bit. Um, it, uh, it is a more optimized version for rendering and animation and stuff like that. But anyway, project is like five months old now, so there's no point in trying to go and fix that stuff now. So this is what the um, project looks like. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I posted this project file on Patreon when it was made, and it was like a few terabytes in file size from what I remember. Um, I had to like remove all the unnecessary parts, and um, it was quite big, probably like 400 gigs. I don't remember what the actual file size was. Um, but you can kind of pick and choose what you want to download. You don't have to download all the big stuff. You can just download like the shoe itself or the after effects files and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's how we scan the shoe. So I can even show you, uh, what the after effects files looks like and the cinema 4d files look like, but these will be for separate tutorials. So here you can see what it looks like when we've gone and imported the file into cinema 4d here, we've got like some shoes with some, um, deformers and meshes and uh, f pose morphs of like points and stuff like that and all sorts of fancy stuff. But here you can kind of see what you can do with the shoe. You can go and animate it. Um, you can apply certain things to um, affect the certain parts of the shoe. You could squash it down here and like get some cool animations. And uh, if you want to check out like some of the still frames, you can check it out on our website. Uh, the, the link will be in the description for Third Dimension Studios. I've done like a little short breakdown of like like some of the parts and like some of the screenshots of what it looks like inside the viewport and stuff again so you can check that out there and like i said the project's on P patreon and if you want to get your free guide you can also get that in the link description and link in the description but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the short tutorial if you want like the cinema 4d tutorial version of like how everything was made inside of cinema 4d i might also do that in the after effects editing and all that but yeah, if you haven't seen the original video, you can also check that out on my channel. And I shall see you on the next video. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.